In this video, I'm going to describe to you in detail the reference architecture model for Industry 4.0 or RAMI 4.0, which could be used as a guide for developing Industry 4.0 applications. My name is Kutzai Mandi Teresa with Industry 4.0.tv and I regularly publish Industrial IoT and Industry 4.0 tutorials, podcasts, and live expert discussions on this channel. So if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell to make sure that you never miss any of the content. This series is sponsored by our friends at HiveMQ who are providers of an enterprise-grade edge and cloud-based MQTT broker. I use it for my own applications and they have a free cloud version that allows you to connect up to 100 IoT devices. So please do check it out to help support this channel. Okay, so now we're going to look at the reference architecture model for Industry 4.0, otherwise known as RAMI 4.0. So, as I have already highlighted in the previous section, the goal of RAMI 4.0 is to come up with a framework representing a manageable architecture that can be used as a frame of reference for Industry 4.0 application development. It helps to identify and position existing standards and thus find gaps and overlaps when applying these standards. Now, as much as it would be nice to build smart factories from the ground up, the reality on the ground is that most developments of Industry 4.0 will be done on top of existing legacy manufacturing systems. And as you will see shortly, as part of its model, RAMI 4.0 itself expands on the hierarchy levels of the IEC 62264 standard, otherwise known as ISA 95, which is a standard with which legacy manufacturing facilities are typically implemented. So as you can see from this fairly common diagram, legacy manufacturing systems typically employ a pyramidal network and system architectural structure based on ISA 95, which is an international standard for developing an automated interface between enterprise and control systems. Now back to RAMI 4.0. What RAMI 4.0 does is that it takes all the crucial aspects of Industry 4.0, whose classification we discussed in the previous section, and combines them into a three-dimensional model so that they can be classified and developed further, thereby paving the way for the breaking down of the complex interrelations across domains into smaller and simpler clusters. But what exactly do we mean by that? In simple terms, we are saying the RAMI 4.0 model is three-dimensional layered because in addition to the hierarchy levels that point to where a certain component lives in the organizational hierarchy of a manufacturing facility, the components themselves have layers that need to be defined. For example, whilst a pump might live in the field devices level of the manufacturing facility hierarchy, we need to also define layers within it, which could be its physical properties, communication abilities, and its abilities to be integrated with other components. So this calls for the creation of a separate axis to capture these layers for each component. Similarly, each component in a manufacturing facility goes through a life cycle, from the time it is a simple idea to its creation, commissioning, usage, and decommissioning. And we also need to capture that life cycle and the value streams of each component along the way, eventually ending up with a 3D model. Now, such a model should enable us to identify existing standards for each layer on each axis. And it should also enable us to identify gaps where there are no existing standards, close loopholes in existing standards, and also identify overlaps in existing standards. Now, let us take a look at these three dimensions in detail. Now, starting with the hierarchy levels dimension. So this dimension essentially serves as vertical integration guidance within a factory. And what that means is it describes criteria for assigning factory assets within levels of a manufacturing organizational hierarchy. So RAMI 4.0 represents the levels of an organizational hierarchy to which an asset could be assigned by defining roles and responsibility within a manufacturing facility. However, as I mentioned previously, RAMI doesn't define these levels from the ground up. Instead, it uses the ISA 95 hierarchy levels that are already being used for implementing most factories today. But in order to extend the functionalities within factories to reflect what has been made possible by Industry 4.0 technologies, they expanded this traditional hierarchy by including product, 
at the bottom so as to capture the aspect of smart product because as already suggested in industry 4.0 the actual product that is being manufactured is intelligent and may contain some functionality during production and therefore can be seen as part of the solution which can influence the production process and then rami further enhances the isa 95 hierarchy levels by including connected world at the top to signify a link to the connected world outside the factory this link made possible by the industrial internet of things could be connecting different manufacturing facilities of the same organization or extending beyond the enterprise boundaries to external engineering firms customers and suppliers however unlike in a traditional pyramidal system architectural structure whereby components only communicate with other components when their levels are next to each other in rami 4.0 components are able to connect with other components from any level and thus form a network structured architecture now this is what set the stage for smart manufacturing because then all the components would be able to gather information from other components at any given time and go on to autonomously reconfigure adapt and optimize themselves accordingly but yet that can only happen if there is consistency in the representation of information in other words the manner in which information is represented in an ERP system must be the same manner in which information is represented in a field level sensor so this brings us to our next dimension that of IT layers now this dimension represents the architecture of components within a manufacturing facility a component in this case could be anything that needs to be represented in the production process such as physical machines software applications documents human beings etc and so to give a clear view of the abilities of the component in question rami decomposes the architecture of a component into layers six layers to be precise these are the asset layer integration layer communication layer information layer functional layer and at the top the business layer now the asset layer represents the physical properties of the component for example metal parts circuit diagrams QR codes, documents, etc. And then next, the integration layer provides information about the component in a form that can be digitally processed so that it can be integrated with other components. And in industry 4.0, this would typically be implemented as a digital twin of the component. An example standard in this context is the asset administration shell, which we'll look at in detail in later sections. Now, it is through this integration layer that components that are not capable of communicating for themselves can be involved in the information world for example fully mechanical components and human beings who interact with the system via human machine interface and then next we have the communication layer which is responsible for providing a standardized form of communicating the digital information about the component it does that by using a common data format and predefined protocols this layer also provides services to the integration layer. One of the most common standards used in this context is OPC UA. Next, we've got an information layer, which is responsible for processing data about the component, persisting the data onto well-defined information models to ensure data integrity and make it available as useful information via a service interface. In other words, is the layer that enforces semantic interoperability of a component and thereby making its data representation and access industry 4.0 compatible and then there is the functional layer which includes formal descriptions of the functions or services provided by the component to other components in a smart manufacturing system in addition the functional layer incorporates some decision making logic executes services that support business processes and it serves as a basis for remote access and the horizontal integration aspect of smart manufacturing. In other words, the functional layer provides industry 4.0 compatible functional access to the component. For example, ERP functions in the manufacturing context are typically located in the functional layer. Lastly, a business layer needs to be defined for each component. In other words, what manufacturing business processes is it linked to? Also, what legal and regulatory conditions does it operate under? Okay, moving on to the life cycle and value streams axis. 
Now, this dimension represents the life cycle of Industry 4.0 components. And as stated earlier, a component could be anything that needs to be represented in the production process. Could be a product or an entire factory. So the idea here is to come up with a standardized approach to describe and track a component over its entire lifetime, from conceptualization of the component to its usage, maintenance, and then decommissioning. Now, for this axis, RAMI 4.0 borrowed from the IEC 62890 standard, which is a standard that establishes basic principles for life cycle management of systems and components used in industrial systems. Now, as you can see, in this axis, an effort is made to highlight a clear distinction between what is called a type of a component and what is called an instance of a component, whereby a type refers to the description of a product or machine in its basic idea before it is created, and that could be in the form of documents or digital models, and an instance refers to an individual physical copy of a component that has been manufactured from that particular description of a type. In other words, a type is created during conceptualization of a component, whereas an instance results from the manufacturing process that uses the type description as input. However, as the instance encounters the real world, more information about its usage and maintenance is generated and that information is sent back to the type stage in a feedback loop in order to allow improvements to be made on the concept. Now, here is why it's so important to distinguish between concrete product instances and their types. So let's say, hypothetically, we have a manufacturer of machine parts. Before producing the parts, they would start by describing a part type. And then after manufacturing the parts and delivering them to a customer, which is a machine manufacturer, they become instances of part types. That's a complete life cycle, right? However, the machine manufacturer has got their own individual life cycle to deal with, whereby they start by describing a machine type and then go on to assemble the parts instances and deliver the resulting machine instance to a factory. Similarly, the factory operator starts by describing the product type and then uses the machine instances to manufacture products and deliver them as instances to the end user. Now, during the usage of the machine, information about a specific part is generated and relayed back to the manufacturer of the part, who then goes back to the part type and updates it so that new instances will be produced with the new information. So, from this, you can see that types also have development and usage or maintenance stages as much as physical instances do. Therefore, the reference model for Industry 4.0 has to and does deal with the types and instances as separate but equivalent entities. Furthermore, because of these interactions of life cycles from various stakeholders, the life cycle of an Industry 4.0 component can no longer be viewed in isolation, but rather as a collective of all parties involved, from component suppliers right down to the customers. Hence, the primary goal for RAMI 4.0 with this axis is to identify standards that could be used to establish relationships between types and instances of different stakeholders in the manufacturing value chain. Okay, so we have described all the three axes of RAMI 4.0. And we can see that within these three axes, all crucial aspects of Industry 4.0 can be mapped. This allows Industry 4.0 components such as sensors, machines and factories to be classified according to the model and consequently making it possible to describe and implement highly flexible industry 4.0 systems with a step-by-step -step transition from traditional manufacturing to smart manufacturing. So in conclusion, RAMI 4.0 gives everyone involved in the smart manufacturing ecosystem a unique perspective but with a unified approach. Whether you are in IT, industrial automation, or equipment manufacturing. In the next section, I'm going to describe to you the Asset Administration Shell, a technology for creating visual representations of Industry 4.0 components.